Welcome back to Carndeities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series and intergalactic obliteration of the cosmic fine-tuning argument. In this video, we're going to be offering an objection to not only the cosmic fine-tuning argument in its confirmation form, but the cosmic fine-tuning argument as a whole, and really, basically all arguments for the existence of God. This is entitled Ed's Perfect Design. For those of you who don't know, Ed is the philosophical Cartesian evil deceiver that is out there. If you don't know what that is, read Descartes or check out my series on the subject. So, an objection to almost all arguments for the existence of God is that the argument does not prove any specific God or any properties of a God. The cosmic fine-tuning argument, and truly all versions of teleological arguments, suffer from this problem. Even if fully successful, all the cosmic fine-tuning argument succeeds in doing is demonstrating that a very powerful designer or consciousness of some kind exists. There is nothing to show that such a designer is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good, or in any way resembles the god of any religion beyond that such a being was able to choose certain cosmic constants, which is possibly requisite for many gods of religions, but surely not sufficient to make one god. An evil deceiver, for example, could just as well explain the finely tuned constants as a god could. Ed might want to construct the universe so that life would exist, so that he could deceive us about the way that things are. Note that this isn't the extremely skeptical hypothesis that everything is imagined in your head, simply that there exists an evil deceiver that wants to mess with you a little bit and allow the universe to exist the way it does, such that life would be created and evolve and turn into something that he could deceive about things. And in fact, if you think that the prime principle of confirmation can be a useful epistemic method, we can show that Ed is more confirmed than God. If you don't know what the prime principle of confirmation is, check out the previous video on the confirmation fine-tuning argument. So take the two hypotheses, the God design hypothesis and all good God finally tuned the universe to sustain life that is unable to know anything for certain, and the Ed Hypothesis and Evil Deceiver finally tune the universe to sustain life that is unable to know anything for certain. Which of these seems more likely? Now, the observation is that there's evil in the world, and there's no way for us to know things for certain. Now, this seems more likely in a world that was created by something evil, where certain knowledge is impossible by design, that wanted certain knowledge to be impossible by design. It seems less likely to have been created by something good that wanted you to be able to know things about them. And while it may be possible that an all good God did create such a world, and we can tell various theodicies to this end, it seems more likely that Ed constructed the world to appear to have evil than God was forced to allow natural evil, things like hurricanes, because of a logical contradiction with free will. Seems quite worrying. And once again, while one might be able to tell some theodicy to get out of the problem of evil, it seems that our observation that the world was created in this way as opposed to another way seems to confirm our evil deceiver hypothesis over our God hypothesis. And in fact, the evil deceiver isn't the only one that could have created the world. There are many possible consciousnesses that could have designed the world to be fit for life, including the Matrix, or a giant computer program, an all-powerful being that's just really bored, other kinds of virtual reality that were perhaps created by humans at a higher level of the universe in which it's less finely tuned and they were created randomly, an all-powerful but not omnipotent alien, an evil deceiver of some kind, Star Trek's Q, a scientist with your brain in a vat, a race of alien experimenters from outside the universe that created the universe as a test subject, or maybe your own mind constructing a false reality because you're actually much more powerful than you realize, but you got bored so you stuck yourself into a weaker mind of sorts. This is clearly a shortened list. Watch some sci-fi if you need to get a sense of 
very powerful aliens that can create universes and fine-tune constants. The point is that there's a lot of things out there that could satisfy this need for something that fine-tuned the universe. And this is not to mention the thousands and thousands of different conceptions of God and gods that do and have existed over the entire course of human history. The likelihood that any one option is correct is just as astronomical, if not more, than any of the cosmic constants being arrived at by chance. In fact, in other words, God himself must be finely tuned to any specific conception of him. And with an infinite number of possible iterations of what God says is good or what God does, God must be infinitely finely tuned to your specific conception of God over someone else's. And if any specific iteration of God is infinitely fine-tuned, then any specific idea of God is in fact less likely than the single randomly tuned universe hypothesis, because those constants are finitely finely tuned, whereas any specific iteration of God, because there's an infinite number of possible things that God could have done, must be infinitely finely tuned. Now, some might say that the properties of God are logically necessary and therefore get out of this in the same way that we kind of argued to get out of the original cosmic fine-tuning argument earlier in this series by saying that perhaps the cosmic constants were arrived at by some law of logic or some necessary conditions of the universe. However, there's a number of problems with this theistic conception. So first, any defense of any property being necessary requires a coherent notion of something like categorical greatness. At least this is the way that the ontological arguments usually frame this, as opposed to hypothetical greatness. If you're confused on this, you should see my series on the modal ontological argument where I really flesh out this objection. And second, even if one consents that some properties of God are necessary, are logically necessary, strange laws of holy texts, such as Women must sit in blood for one to two months after giving birth, Leviticus 12, 1 through 8, are far from logically necessary. Therefore, some properties of God can't be logically necessary, unless you think you can deduce from logic that women need to sit in blood for one to two months after giving birth. You have a problem with claiming that all the properties of God are logically necessary. So with so many possible options that are all equally confirmed by the conclusion of the cosmic fine-tuning argument, that we were designed, there's no way to choose between them with any degree of certainty. Therefore, as good skeptics, what should we do but suspend judgment? That was Ed's perfect design. Next up, we will look at our final video in our grand teleological series, Cosmology is Not Science. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.